So this is the people who actually are not only getting a lot of leads, but those leads are turning into real true clients for them. Here's what they all had in common. Again, we looked individually at each one of their websites because with the survey, we asked everyone to give us their website URL. And here's what they had in common. They had a calendar link right on their website. They made it super easy for people to just book. Again, number one takeaway from this webinar today, if you do not have a calendar available for people to book with you online, get one at it. Even at 20 over 10, you guys might be shocked to hear this, we did not have our sales team's calendar publicly available until about eight months ago. When we added that, we saw the number of bookings per week shoot up by like 200%. So it's huge, huge, huge to get it added. Um, all of these clients or all of these advisors who were getting 11, six to 10 or 11 or more clients per year had a blog, they were blogging regularly, and they were uh, making sure that their whole entire website was SEO friendly. They were also targeting some sort of specific audience. So I know a lot of you will say, well, I don't have a niche. You know, I don't just serve physicians or I don't just serve athletes, but that's okay. You can be niche specific in other ways. Maybe, you know, it's something about the way um, your faith, your faith-based advisor, or maybe it's your location. Your location is a niche when it comes to SEO. So helping people find you online, if you want to target people in Littleton, Colorado, where you live, that's your niche. That's fine. That's the community in which you reside. But you need to put that then directly on the homepage of your website. And again, I'll show you more here in a minute. And then your language on your homepage. All of these advisors did a fantastic job writing the copy on the homepage to be what we call problem solution based. So instead of saying, hi, welcome to Samantha Russell Financial Planning, where I provide comprehensive financial plans for my clients, right? It's all about me and what I do. It's, hi, welcome, you know, hi, or maybe you don't even say hi and welcome. They say, um, providing customized financial planning for busy and motivated professionals who don't have time to allocate to financial management, right? And that is telling those people who are landing on their site, oh yes, that's me, you know, allowing those people to raise their hand and say, I'm super busy, yes, I'm a motivated professional and I do not have the time to deal with this right now. So it's allowing those folks to self-qualify. That's what all of these high performers had in common. They also were really likely to incorporate video. Um, the numbers kept changing on the exact percentages, but about 35% of them had video somewhere on their website. And then if we were diving even deeper into what they were doing on social media or if they had a YouTube channel, that number went up to about 50%. So they were using video as a way to connect with prospects. And then this was really interesting. Roughly 50% had a as seen on or um, featured in section where they would put the logos of places that they had been uh, featured as an expert, right? So investment um, news or uh, the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, anywhere where they'd been featured to show prospects that they are a thought leader, that they do have expertise that these large media publications are calling on them for. And then one of the most interesting ones, um, in my opinion, is that there was sort of this split. There was people who either were updating their website all of the time and getting a lot of traffic um, from blogging and SEO, or there was people that really weren't updating it all that often at all, but they were part of a network like NAPFA, the Garrett Planning Network, where the network was doing a ton of consumer education and that network's name was constantly in the news, consumers were seeing it, and then consumers would go to that network's website and then find an advisor from there, right? So the Garrett Network, let's say, is on, um, in an article, they interview Cheryl Garrett, she mentions what her network does, what they provide, a consumer goes to look it up, and then they click the find an advisor button, and then they're led to one of these websites of one of these advisors. So really, the only way you can get away with not blogging all that often or updating your website frequently and still getting leads is by being a part of one of these associations that does that advocacy and that consumer education work for you that has a find an advisor lookup. Um, that was really the only scenarios we saw where people were still getting a high percentage of clients coming in through the website, cold bookings, but they were not blogging routinely.